for me. You have for righteousness, righteousness. That's what I long for. Righteousness is what I know I need. That's what I need. Righteousness, righteousness is what you want for me, for me. So take my heart. That's what I long for, Lord. Brokenness is what I know I need. Brokenness, brokenness. That's what you want. That's what you want from me. So take my heart. What you want, what you want from me is what you want me. That's what I need, that's what you need. Only now what you want from me. That's what you want from me. It's what you want, it's what you want. It's what you want, Lord. Yes, it's what you want for me. Happy Sabbath, brethren. Are we having a happy Sabbath today? God is good. And all the time, he is excellent. We'd just like you to know that we, the 
brethren of Porter's Mountain, Seventh-day Adventist Church, will be leading out this morning in the Sabbath School program, and we will be working in line with your theme, and let's repeat the theme. What's the theme? United for Mission, we will go. And in this theme, we are seeing that an action needs to be taken. Isn't that so? There is a commitment to the action that is to be taken. We will go. And at this time, I invite Sister Marciana Smith to come forward as she does the scripture reading. I invite you to stand with me. You'll turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 2. And she will be reading from verse 1 to 8. The scripture reading comes from Acts 2, verse 1 to 8. We will read alternately. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there were all with one accord in one place. <laughs> and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And now hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we are born. It's the word of the Lord. Remain standing. Sister Grant will come forward and do the prayer for us. Let us pray. Our oh, great God and our Heavenly Father, we truly want to give you thanks this morning for bringing us here in our right mind. Heavenly Father, thank you for journeying mercies. As we come to present this Sabbath school, Father God, help us to present ourselves also. May each heart be blessed. May each waiting soul come, Heavenly Father, and bow before you and say, Lo, this is my God. We give you thanks, we give you praise for your blessings throughout the week and throughout all our lives. May you be high and lifted up today. Help us, dear Lord, that we may not go back the way we came. I give you thanks and I say praises to you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I say, Amen. Go the distance, hello God, hello, hello. Of this whole world is gone to pieces. Can we fix it? Is there time? Hate and violence just increases. We are so selfish, cruel and blind. We fight and kill each other in your name, defending you. Do you love some more than others? We are so lost and confused.
there's still a chance that we can make a man. Hello, God, we learned our lesson. Oh, God, now let us go more than always, no more than ever. Hello, God, hello, 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 God, we really need you. We can't make it without you. Hello, God, we One more chance to prove ourselves to you. Hello, God. Hello, God. Hello, God. Hello, God. We work the field of souls together. And mother anchor close to home to hold the neighbor's hand. Who, who wants to have a father more and labor for the best? The life we both said we were gone. you and I. Some fields are blooming now. Other fields are dry. We are not the same. But differences aside, we'll work the fields of souls. Together you and I, we'll work the field of soul. We'll work the field of soul. Oh, together you and I. Some fields are blooming now, others run on dry. We are not the same. Differences aside, we work the fields of soul together, you and I. We are not the same, but differences aside, we work the fields of soul. Together you and I, we'll work the fields of soul, together you and I. There is a name that is so great. Name so wonderful to me. This name is worthy of all praises because of him I am made free. That name is Jesus. 
This name speaks peace onto my storm clouds. This name speaks calm unto all fears. And when I think that no one loves me, his loving presence is so near that name is Jesus, oh, how I love him, the one who gave his life for me because of love, so unconditional, I will have life eternal. Sometimes I feel discouraged and I think my words in vain. 
Right, say a bigger amen, brethren. The voice that you hear rolling so heavy is our pastor. All right, so we're happy to have the group, and for the very first time, you are hearing them. They are VIP, and that's not, that's not very important. People are really important. It's not a very important point, but they are vocals in praise. Amen? Now, there's another group that is here that I love so much, and at this time, I'm going to invite Brother Vinton Vaz to come, the leader of the Vaz Quartet. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Indeed, it is a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord. What do you say? Now, in James 4, verse 8, it says, Come near to God, and he will come near to you. That tells me that my God is a God of action, and he will do what he says he will do. And we are his children, so that means we must be action people too. Right? The Bible says, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock on the door shall be open. That is why God wants a relationship with us because he wants, he could have read our minds, but instead he wants us to ask and it will be given unto us. And that is what our concert is about. Our concert is under the theme, you made a way. We are not going to sit down and, and just mope and say, boy, not now go, go on for we, and we can't bother go to school, but no. We are here because we know, that, we know that the Lord will do something for us. And it is not a, it is not a Bible verse, it is, but, but, but it's an age-old saying. God helps those who? Right. God helps those who help themselves. And I have been accepted into medical school. That is what this concert is, trying to, is going to fund. And by God's grace, I will reach my goal. 
And briefly, on a few, a few details of this concert, it's on August 6th at, Savai, at the Savai Auditorium. You know, the world is going to have their events, but God's people have their events as well to enjoy. And so the tickets are for $1,000. Children under 12 will pay 500 at the gate. Please come out and support the event. And guess what? If you don't come, send somebody come in your place. Contribute, support. Each ticket will help us reach our goal faster. Now, since we are a singing group, we can't just come here and just talk, talk, talk. Yeah, man, we are, go we are, we are going to leave a few words of encouragement in song with you. So, please listen as we, as we sing. Nothing but God's mercy you created to cover me. Love you presented, then you proved it on Calvary. Jesus, with the blood that you drip, catch me when I slip. So glad. Just for me, just for me, just for me. How many of you are glad that God did it just for you? Just for me, just for me, just for me, just for me. Father, we thank you for doing it just for me. You hung, you bled and you died just for me. Jesus, we thank you for what you did on that cross at Calvary. Jesus, you did it for millions of people, but I'm so glad you did it just for me. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your freedom. God said, no, no. I'll never let you go. No, no. Give my life for you so. No, no. See, I love you too much to let go. God said, no, no. I'll never let you go. No, no. I give my life for you so. I'm so glad you did it. I'm so glad you did it. 
I'm glad that you did it, say it. So glad you did it. Glad that you did it. So glad you did it, Jesus. So glad you did it, Jesus. You hung, you bled and died. I've got grace. I've got mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Just for me. Just for me. Just for me. So glad you did it for me. For me. For me. So glad you did it for me. Just for me, Lord. You did it for me. You did it for me. For me. Lord, just for me. Lord, just for me. With the blood that you dripped, catch me when I slip. Lord, I'm glad. Yeah. So glad you did it for me. Come on, until you guys sing it. Just for me. Just for me. Just for me. So glad you did it for me. Come on, church, sing with us. Just for me. Sing it, church. Just for me. I want you to hear the harmony up in this house. Just, just for me. Just for me. Father, we thank you for doing it. Come on, church. So glad you did it for me. Just for me. Everybody say just. Just for me. Just for me. Come on, church. Let's hear you now. Just for me. So glad. So glad you did it for me. Just for me. Just for me. Just With the blood that you dripped, catch me when I slip. Lord, I'm glad, yeah. So glad you did it for me. So I'm here. And I like the, the theme you have to be working with. And the mission to go, it is not because you extend the church and it's bigger, so you need more people in it. But to also to have them know that Jesus loved them and that he's coming back. And not just coming back, but that's based on what we are seeing now, we know that he's coming soon. So I'm here to, a matter of fact, I got this message from him and I've been sharing it all around where I go. So it's like, I'm like a, like a scratch record because I know many songs, but I choose to sing one song. And um, I leave my little devices that have my soundtracks, but I'll be doing some a cappella. Mr. Musician, I'll, I'll work with those. If I have one song to sing, if I could tell this church one thing of my Lord and my King, what would I tell them? The season, it slipped away. I can almost hear him say, won't you touch someone's heart today? And he wants to tell them, tell them I'm coming soon. Tell them I'm coming real soon. 
I want you to tell them, tell them in your song, it won't be very long until I take them home. I want you to tell them, oh, go and tell them, I'm coming soon. The signs had made it clear. That the time of the Lord is drawing near Is his sweet gentle voice that I hear I want you to tell them Tell them I'm coming soon Tell them I'm coming real soon I want you to tell them Tell them in your song, it won't be very long until I take them home. Oh, won't you tell them? Yes, go and tell them I'm coming soon. Now he that had an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit is saying, loud and clear. You know, many may say, I've heard it before, but tell it just once more. Tell them I'm coming, I'm coming soon. Tell them I'm coming real soon. I want you to tell them. Tell them in your song, it won't be very long until I take them home. Oh, won't you tell them? Yes, go and tell them I'm coming soon. Oh, won't you tell them how much I love them? I'm coming soon. Amen and amen. Tell them, oh, tell them that I'm coming soon. Happy Sabbath, beloved friends. God is good. And all the time, lift up your heads, O you gates, and be what? He lifted up you everlasting doors for the King of who? Glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. David continues to postulate. Lift up your heads. O oh, you gates and be what? He lifted up you everlasting doors for the king of glory shall come in. The question, the question is still being asking who is this king of glory? He is a lily of the valley. He is a bright and morning star. He is a way maker. He is a miracle worker. Do you know which king I'm talking about? Do you know which king I'm talking about? His name is Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. Bless the Lord at all times. At this time, I'm going to be inviting the authentic praise to come at this time to take us in our praise and worship segment. And I'm asking those participating in our divine service to meet me around the back. The authentic praise will be coming at this time to take us through our praise and worship. God bless you, beloved. Bless the Lord, everybody. I can't hear you. Bless the Lord, everybody. Can we stand and give the Lord a shout of praise? Has he been good to you? If we should ever see some things that he brought us through this week and didn't bother to show us, we're asking that you stand with us. So we're going to blend our voices as we go into this session of praise and worship. And we're not here to entertain you. We're here to worship God with you. Amen? Amen? So I want you to be blending your voice. We're going to lift the roof because 
When we were out in the world and doing things for the devil, we were not afraid to give it our all. God deserves nothing less than our best. And our best is not even enough for him. So let's join together and give him worship. What an awesome God. You are awesome in this place. Mighty God. You are awesome in this place. Abba Father. You are worthy of all praise. To
And so he, in his wisdom, he looked through the corners of time and knew that man would become exhausted. And so he rested on the Sabbath day so that we too could enjoy the blessings of the Sabbath.
stand. Asking everyone to stand as we continue with our worship. Oh God, you are our God. Earnestly we seek you today. Our souls thirst for you. Our whole being longs for you. Because we have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and glory, we can respond. Lord, your love is better than life itself. And we declare that our lips will glorify you. We will praise you as long as we live. And in your name, we will lift up our hands to do your work. Lord, we will be satisfied if you feed us. And we will now sing praises to your name. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Father, we thank you so much for your love and your tender mercy. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you died on Calvary Cross so that we can have the life to worship you in the beauty of holiness. And so today, Lord, I ask that you will climb down inside of us today and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Those in the temple worshiping here today may have different challenges. I'm asking you right now to cover them. Those streaming on the internet, wherever they are located, Lord, I ask you right now to stand by their bedside and help them to understand that there is coming a day when challenges will be over. There is coming a day when sickness will be eradicated. There is coming a day when you, Dr. Jesus, will come and take us home to spend eternity with you. And so we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The hymn of praise is number 359. Heart the voice of Jesus calling.
You may be seated. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Come on, happy Sabbath, people of God. How are you feeling today? Good, bless. If you are happy and you know it, let me hear you say amen. amen. And if you are happy and you really know it, let me hear you say hallelujah. hallelujah. And if you are happy and you really, really want to show it, just wave those hands and let me hear you say thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, indeed. You should be happy to be in the house of the Lord today. You should be happy to be here at Beeston Spring, Seventh-day Adventist Church. Why? Because there is no place like this place. Anywhere near this place. And if you weren't at this place, where would you be? Out of place, of course. So this is the place to be. I just want to welcome you all to Harvest 2022 here at the Beast and Spring SDA Church. If you are visiting from St. Elizabeth, let me hear you say amen. 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 If you are visiting from St. James, let me hear you say amen. If you are visiting... From Hanover, let me hear you say amen. amen. If you're visiting from Westmoreland, let me hear you say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh yes, oh yes. And what about my first comer? You are coming for the very first time. Just wave your hand. You're coming to, wow, where have you been all this time? We welcome you. And if you're coming from Manchester, let me hear you say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have people from all over. What about if you are here and you are from another denomination? Just wave your hand. Hallelujah. We have, we have two persons. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What if you are here, you are not a Seventh-day Adventist and you are not from another denomination. You are not a baptized member. You are not a Christian, but you are here. Just wave your hand. Yes? Oh, you are here. I, I, I'm seeing you in the congregation, but maybe they are shy. We still want to welcome you. Welcome to Harvest 2022. Brother Gooden, I'm seeing you over the corner there. We welcome you. And what if you are here and you are not from Jamaica? Just wave your hand. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So we have people from far, from near, and from far in. So we welcome you wherever you're coming from. And as you go today... I, I, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Those who are watching online, I want to welcome you. Thanks for making Beast and Spring your place of worship today. You could have chosen any other platform, but you have chosen to be with us. We want to welcome you. Put some hearts in the chat or put some thank you, Jesus, in the chat as you worship with us today. Let us stand as we sing our welcome song. If I like the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. I like the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. I like the thrill that I God's wonderful people. It's so nice to see those in God in the heavenly places feel that I feel when I get together with God
raise your hands and praise the Lord, brethren. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. And as you go, I just want to remind you that don't wear a frown. Because if you wear a frown, you will get wrinkles. Don't cry. If you cry, you will get wrinkles. And, but wear a smile because when you smile, you get dimples. And have a blessed day in the Lord. Church choir will now bless our hearts with a special song.
to call me Auntie Kim. So let's do that again. Good morning, boys and girls. Good. Good morning, bigger boys and girls. How are we all doing today? You're fine? Very good. Now today is harvest day. Now I want all my boys and girls to look to your right. Yes, look to your right. And you're going to search for a fruit and when you have found it, you're going to raise your hand and tell me the name of that fruit. You're looking to your right. So look on the table and look on that piano over there. As a matter of fact, we have more than one fruit. But tell me the name of the fruit that you are able to point out. Yes? Do I see a hand? Yes, there. Pineapple. Very good. Give her a clap, brethren. Do we see any other fruit over there? Carrot. All right, you say carrot, but carrot is vegetable, right, brethren? But there's another one. All right, he's shy. Pepper. Pepper. <laughs> All right, so they're identifying the different items that they can see there. One more. Tomato. Yes, give him a clap. Did we know that tomato is a fruit? Yes, it is. All right, so I... Jelly. <laughs> Jelly. Clap him, brethren. He wants a clap, too. All right, we don't want to be too long. All right, I want to hear from you. About three persons, because we don't have all day. What is your favorite fruit? Pineapple. Pineapple. Anybody else? Apple. 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 All right, do you want to hear my favorite fruit? Yes. I like the papaya. The papaya. Yes? One more? We don't have all day. What's your favorite fruit? Watermelon. Watermelon. All right, do you want to hear the bigger aunties and uncles? All right, one person from the congregation, tell them your favorite fruit. All right, no. They love all the fruits, right? All right, I want to ask you another question. Yes? Pineapple. Yes, pineapple. All right, I want to ask you another question. Uh, what if we should leave all these fruits in the ground and on the trees? What would happen to them? What would happen to them? They would spoil. And when the fruit is spoiled or we say it rots or some people say it rotten, can we enjoy that fruit? No. So what should we do when the fruits on the trees are ripe and all of that? We pick them, not true? Now I have another question for you. Did you know that people are like fruits? Never know that, not true? All right, so you just said to me, that when the fruit is ripe on the tree, somebody has to go and pick it. Isn't that so? Right. If we don't do that, it will fall off and rot. It will spoil and have no use. Now, people are like that. Now, there are many persons out in the world who do not know anything about Jesus. Did you know that? Now, all my boys and girls who are standing in front of me this morning, you go to church, so you know something about Jesus. Am I right? Yes, we know that Jesus loves us, and we know that he's coming again to take us to where? But we have to be all? Oh, yes, very good. Now, there are many persons out in the world who do not know about Jesus. They do not care about Jesus. Those persons are like fruits that we see on a tree. Now, in the same way, we have to pick the fruit and bring it home to enjoy it with our families. It is the same way the Lord wants all of us, including children, to go out into the world 
to those persons who are doing, maybe doing bad things, or they don't care about Jesus. And do you think that Jesus wants anybody to, let me put it this way, spoiler, rotten and dead and have no use? No. Because if we don't tell people in the world about Jesus, they will be just like the fruit on the tree. So they are out there, and boys and girls, you're not telling your friends that Jesus loves them. Because you know, you have some friends at school who don't go to church. Not true. No, Jesus wants you to tell them about him, right? And when you tell them about Jesus, you can say to them, come to church with me. And if they come to church with you, it is just like we go to the tree and pick the fruit off the tree and bring it home. So we go into the world and bring them into the church, right? Because if they stay out there, if, if, if uncle and auntie and daddy and mommy don't serve Jesus, they will die in their sins, just like the fruit stays on the tree, nobody goes to pick it and it stays there and it rots and it has no use again. So we are going to be disciples. Say, I am going to be a disciple. Say that. Right, because when you go to school or even at home with your little brothers and sisters who are not Christians, you're going to tell them about Jesus. And how are you going to be a fruit picker? You're going to tell them to come to church. So when they leave from home and out in the world and come to church, then all of us will be, will be able to enjoy Jesus together. All right, boys and girls? So I want you to tell others about Jesus. Say, I will tell others about Jesus. That's right, because Jesus does not want anybody to go to hell. He wants all of us to serve him so that we can go to? To heaven. Close your eyes for me, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these children. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you have bestowed and continue to bestow upon them. They are small, and I'm sure that the adults would have gotten the message, but I pray that they would have gotten even the message that they are supposed to tell somebody about Jesus. May you continue to bless all of us and be with the rest of today's service. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so you can go back to your seats. And remember, you are going to tell somebody about Jesus so that they can come to church and serve him just like all of us. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Any color is just right, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the In the foothills of sorrow, looking up through the valley of fear, you can see doubt off in the distance, and you're about to lose heart right here. So don't ever give in, don't ever give up. In the foothills of sorrow, looking up through the valley of fear, you can see doubt off in the distance, and you're about to lose heart right here. So don't ever give in, don't ever give up. God is with you, and you'll overcome. The mountain will tell you 
that you can make it over. It will try to convince you that it's way too high. Though you feel defeated, know that God keeps his promise. So you tell the mountain just how big our God is. Just try to remember all the trials he's brought you through. And when his power gave you strength on the journey, that very hour you needed it too. So don't be discouraged, cause time after time, God never failed you. Go on and climb. The mountain will tell you that you can make it over. It will try to convince you that it's way too high. Though you feel defeated, know that God keeps his promise. So you tell the mountain just how big our God is. Though you feel defeated, know that God keeps his promise. So you tell the mountain just how big our God is. So you tell the mountain just how big our God is. Just how big our God is. to Adam's lost generation. So let me tell you what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you that God sees the preaching of the gospel like the sowing of seeds. I'm going to tell you that God uses the harvest principle to send you a message, to send me a message that every time you see a breadfruit, every time you see a mango, every time you see coconut, every time you see corn or carrot or pineapple, there's going to come a season when the harvest of the earth will be reaped. You may not believe God. You may have abandoned your faith in God. You may have walked out on your former days of faithful commitment. But can I tell you, God will come whether or not you still believe in him. The earth shall be filled with the glory of God whether or not you still believe in Jesus. Whoever you are, regardless of your age, I stop by on your harvest Thanksgiving service just to make an announcement. We are farmers in this life and I hear the Bible says whatever we sow, that shall we reap. But God knows, God knows. I I can't sow enough gifts of righteousness. So he sent Jesus to Calvary. And in order that those in Russia and Ukraine and Jamaica and England and Pinnock Shafton and all across Darleston and Beeston Spring and Petersfield and Westmoreland and St. Elizabeth, God has one word. It's one word of salvation. Whether you're Adventist, Anglican, Baptist or Catholic, there's there's only one gospel. There's only one everlasting gospel. And he says, preach up from morning till evening. Preach up from continents and islands. Preach up to young and old. Preach up to sick, lame, and lazy. Preach up. Preach up. Preach up. I saw an angel flying in the midst of heaven. Well, let me explain something to you. The word used for angel here simply means messenger. Are you listening to me? When he said 
the flying in the midst of heaven. He speaks of the universality of God's message all across the world. I used to wonder with a lazy church like mine, how will God get the word out? I used to wonder with young people who believe in sports more than they believe in the spreading of the gospel. I used to wonder with a church sometimes who believe in gossiping more than preaching the gospel. How will God get the word done? How will God warn the world until COVID-19 locked down the world? And I could stay in one corner and 42 million persons could connect to a little place called West Jamaica. I said, God, you're awesome. If the devil had meant COVID-19 for evil, God meant it for good. And so on your smartphone, he can connect you with the rest of the world. I saw an angel flying in the midst of heaven. For God will have a remnant people who will preach the everlasting gospel. They'll keep the gospel. They'll use big talk. They'll use Instagram. They'll use Facebook. They use what they have. Are you listening to me? So John said, I saw the message swiftly moving. It's a universal gospel for there shall be no excuse to anyone anywhere. He'll bring the gospel to your front door. If you don't want to come to church, he'll confront you with the gospel for as sure as God lives. You can burn down the church and burn up the Bible and shoot all the preacher, but you have an appointment with the living God. Are you listening to me? And, and so, and so, this harvest text is not disconnected from the preaching of the everlasting gospel. The harvest text is inseparably intertwined with the message that says, fear God. And give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. Can I tell you this? I am not good at farming. I love eating, but I'm not good at farming. My daddy was a farmer. And there were some days I couldn't go to school when he, it's sowing time. I hated planting peanuts because there was something meticulous about planting peanuts. When you're planting peanuts for my father, you have these acres, you have these long rows that seem from here to Russia. And you're supposed to put the peanut grains certain inches apart from each other. Now let me confess to you. It is good when the morning just starts. You are meticulous in your obedience to your father's command. One grain here and four inches or six inches down, one more grain and then one more grain. When the morning is cool and the gentle wind is blowing, you have no problem. You may even whistle as you measure them. But when it comes to 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock and worse, you don't see any blue smoke anywhere. You don't see any pot bubbling anywhere. Ah, it's not just the heat of the sun but the complaint in your stomach and you now your eyes begin to dazzle and your mind said cho six six inches and you fill up your hand boof and you fill up your hand boof and you fill up your hand boof and you, when you get to the end of the day you said i'm finished but you're forgetting the hour 
of his judgment. I was at my mother. I didn't go with my daddy. I was always around my mother's curtail. When my, when my daddy gets angry, the bull run for cover. The dog is gone to hide and his voice drops. And I'm at home from school and I hear the bike coming up in the yard. Glenn! I said, the Lord is my shepherd a woman we do know. Have you ever gotten to the place where you've done some stuff and you forget about them until in the most unfavorable times it comes up? Let me use that crude story to tell you. In my tiredness, as the weight of the heat and the day was on, I forgot my instruction. I became careless with my instruction. When the morning just got started, I made sure that every grain was placed just as my daddy said. But when the heat of the day and my tiredness got the better of me, I became careless with the instruction that my father gave me. And in the moment of my carelessness, I forgot that everything I planted is going to grow. I forgot that every seed that's covered is going to grow. And in my carelessness, I could play as if nothing happened. But here comes daddy's voice. The text says, fear God and give glory to him. That does not mean be afraid of God. It means acknowledge him as sovereign creator. It means reverence God. It means be careful to give attention to his instruction because the hour of his judgment has come. The text has hope on one side and justice on the other side. Now you don't have to be afraid of the justice of God if you follow the instructions of God. The trouble, the trouble, the trouble comes when, when you live and die without dying in the Lord. And so at the end of the three angels message, the text says regardless of how difficult it is to follow the detailed instruction, regardless of how hot the heat of the sun, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. If you've got to face the heat of the sun, be true to God's instruction. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. No matter how long the day, follow what your father tells you. Because if you and I become careless in our sowing, be sure our sins will find us out. Because we shall reap what we sow. The text, the text that she read, the harvest principle is inseparable from the everlasting gospel. Listen to me, listen to me. The first angel message, I mean Anglicans and Baptists and Methodists have no problem preaching it. Fear God! But in that first message, when it says give glory to him, they forgot that the Bible says whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. It is God's instruction that tells me as his child what to eat and how to eat. And therefore, if I go and die in the Lord, I have to live in the Lord. And if I go and live in the Lord, I've got to obey the everlasting gospel. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about the harvest principle etched in the bosom of the everlasting gospel. So he comes to the second angel's message. And he speaks to us of a truth Remember I told you 
that when God said to Adam and Eve and the devil, I will put enmity between thy seed, devil, and her seed. It'll crush your head, but you shall bruise his heel. Isaiah picked that up and said, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. That's the seed of the woman. Hang with me, hang with me. I'm going somewhere with you. So from Genesis 3 and verse 15, when the gospel was preached by God himself, he warns about the deception that brought about the destruction of Adam and Eve when they had to leave. When I say destruction, they had to leave Eden. Why did they leave? Because the devil deceived them. Here in the second angel's message, we have a warning against deception. And if you embody and hold deception in your bosom, the second angel's message is clear. It says deception will fall. Man-made religion will fall. Confusion will fall. There is no confusion in the word of God. If you take it line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, for all scripture is given by God's inspiration. And so the deception comes to us when we think we can step aside from this book or we can take only a part of it and fix up the rest of it with man-made philosophy. So the second angel said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. He, you've got to understand, when John was speaking, ancient Babylon had long since passed from the scene. John lived when Rome ruled the world. Are you listening to me? Babylon was the first world political kingdom. Babylon came and went. Media Persia came and went. Greece came and was gone. So when John was writing and John said, Babylon is fallen. He wasn't talking about the ancient kingdom of physical Babylon. He uses Babylon as a code name. Let me explain something to you. Jerusalem represents the city of God. Babylon had its roots. Genesis 11, where after God said to them, I will not again destroy the earth by flood. Here comes Nimrod and his descendants. And they said, we can't trust God. Let's build us a city whose top may reach heaven just in case another flood comes. It is salvation by man-made effort. So God comes down and confused their language. And that's the root. Babel is the root word for Babylon. It represents opposition to God's truth. It represents a contrary view to what what God says. It represents another opinion other than the truth of God. So right here in the last message in earth's closing days just before earth's final harvest, God has a word for every nation, every kindred, every tongue, every people, black, white, blue, rich, poor, young or old, religious confusion will fall. Take your instruction from the plain thus, said the Lord God. I wish I had time, so let me run fast. In the final three-part message, against which the harvest text is set, comes the issue of earth's final conflict. The conflict over truth and error. The conflict between God's Sabbath and a man-made Sabbath. The conflict between the powers of the state and the power of truth. So, here we are. Can I tell you that the stage is being set? Are you listening to me? 
There's going to be food shortages. The war in one end of the globe is going to cause food shortage across the rest of the globe. You tell me it can't happen? So let me remind you. One little disease in far China and every airport was shut down. Are you listening to me? Some folks said it could never reach here. But monkeypox reach here too, you know. And after monkeypox, something else going to come. Because the world is but a global village. Listen to me carefully. Government's primary purpose is not the word of God. Their focus on the economy. Their focus on politics. Their focus on what the majority wants. So when the remnant decides that they're going to be true to what God says and the powers that be says your religion is getting in the way of national progress. When the remnant decided we're going to be true to what God says. When the remnant decided whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, we're going to do all to the glory of God. This, this text is saying to us that your life itself may get on the line. Blessed, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. And the only way to die in the Lord is to stand up for what the Lord says. So here comes Shadrach, Meshach, and the bad Negro. The king said, I am in charge. The king said, I am God today. Ain't no worship of any other God. I go play the music. I go blow the trumpet. And all of you must fall down. And somebody said, King, them three boys, them three seven-day boys, them three Sabbath-keeping boys, them three commandment-keeping boys, them decide, sir, them not going to bow down. King said, bring them to me. Bring them to me. You ought to read Daniel 3. And when they come up, the king said, is it true what I hear? Is it true what I hear? I'm going to give you one more chance. I'm going to play the music one more time. And the boy said, no need, king. Don't waste your time. Don't play the music. The everlasting gospel is rooted in our heart. If you play the music ten more times, we're not going to change our mind. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. I'm rooted, I'm grounded in the everlasting gospel. I'm sold out for God. So king, we hear you. Watch what they said in Daniel 3, 17, 18, and 19. They said, our God whom we serve is able. Lord have mercy. The text I read first said, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. You've got to know that he is able even to raise you up if you die being faithful to him. We've got too many little liver coward in the church of God. Listen, I'm going to preach today whether you like it, yes or no. Sometimes God will have to send a hurricane to shake us up. We are cruising. We are cruising too easy. We are living on easy street. God has got to cause some stuff to come to shake us up. So the boy said, the boy said, our God whom we serve, we know that he is able. Now listen to me. If the text had stopped right there, I would still give them A. 
But now I've got to look for a grade higher than A. Because they said, we know he is able. We know he can deliver. But even if he chooses not to deliver, we will not bow down. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? In these days of earth's final conflict, in these days when the remnant church must measure 12 inches to each foot, must weigh, are you listening to me? God is looking for solid remnant heaven going people. Why do you serve God? Do you serve him because you're looking for a good job? Do you serve him because you want to get a good husband or a good wife? Why do you serve God? Will you still love him when you lose your job? Will you still love him when the cupboard is empty and your pocket is empty? Will you still love him when there's no herd in the stall? Can you say like Habakkuk in Habakkuk 3, 17 and 18, although the fig tree shall not blossom and the labor of the olive shall fail and there's no herd in the stall and no meat in the house, I will stand upon my watch. The trouble, the trouble, the trouble with the remnant church in earth's closing days as we face the final harvest is that we are literally the coward. We are materialistically conscious while becoming spiritual dwarf. Some of us can't even defend the doctrines of the church because we don't take the time to read them. The harvest is almost ripe. The angel says in the text, thrust in thy sickle. Listen to me. You heard her verses, but don't miss the point that the harvest text is directly connected to the everlasting gospel. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, don't play the music anymore. We know what God can do. We know what God says. But we don't serve God just because of what he can do. We serve God because of who he is. And because of who he is, I go serve him. When the pain rocked my body, I go serve him. When they gossip on me in church, I go serve him. When, when I lose my job, I go serve him. When I can't understand what he's doing, I still go serve him. Because he is God. Plus nothing, minus nothing. He is God and will always be God. And so the king, the king said, the king said, I, I wish I had time. The king said, don't, don't you know who I am? Can't you see the fiery furnace? They said, King, we see it. He said, well, I want to see which God is able to deliver you from my hand. And to show how powerful he think he was. He said, heat the fire seven times hotter. But he picked the wrong number. I said he picked the wrong number. Maybe if he had said six times. Then the man who is known by 666 may have had a chance. But he picked the wrong number. He picked God's number. He forgot the word says six days shall thou labor. But seven is God's number. The seven stars. The seven letters. The seven churches. The seven files. The seven trumpets. The seven eyes of God. He picked the wrong number. And when he picked the number seven and the heat of the furnace seven times hotter, God says, I got you where I want you. And the boys, listen to me. In these last days, God is looking for people who are conscious that harvest time is coming. God is looking for people who though the heat of the sun 
is hot over your head and the tiredness comes and you're tempted to dump your faith God says follow my instruction obey what I tell you because whatever you sow whatever you plant is going to grow can you play for me son past me not old gentle savior I'm almost done but hear the preacher play it for me hear the preacher hear the preacher Shadrach Meshach and Abednego settle in their heart that it is easier and better to die for God than to live without him. I said Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego is conscious that God will have the last word. That though you can't understand him and you can't see where he's taking you, you know it's always better to trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. You may lose some friends. You may lose your job. But harvest is coming. I said harvest is coming. The everlasting gospel is God's final call. God's final declaration that he means what he says. And he says what he means. That from Genesis to Revelation he will not write another Bible. He will not send another set of commandments. He will not give any other Sabbath. He will not change his commandments. He will not alter his teachings on eating right and dressing right and living right. He will not alter and so he calls it the everlasting gospel from Genesis to Revelation to every nation to every kindred to every tongue to every people and then he said listen no matter how you lift up man made doctrine he going tumble down he said Babylon is fallen is fallen and then he comes to the last warning he said listen I gave you my Sabbath I gave you the Bible I gave you one savior for the there's only one mediator between God and man and he's Christ Jesus. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. There's only one plan of salvation. There's only one way to be redeemed from sin. There's only one blood that can cleanse us from all unrighteousness and that's the blood of Jesus. But I hear one denomination say they talk about they have the right to pray you out of purgatory or to send you to purgatory but the last warning message says if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God it is after that passage that the text says I saw an angel on the cloud saying trust in thy sickle because the earth has received its last warning message the everlasting gospel the three angels messages heaven's last call won't go on forever and ever and ever I hear the psalm says there is a gate that stands ajar and through its portals gleaming a radiance from the cross afar if you're outside the fold of safety run for your life because the gate of mercy is about to close if you have walked away from Jesus come on back if you have not surrendered Render your heart to Jesus. Come on in. If you're living carelessly, pull up your pants, tighten your belt, fix up yourself because the harvest of the earth is about to be reaped. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. And the only way to die in the Lord is to live in the Lord. I'm done. I'm done. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. I'm done. The everlasting gospel says it doesn't matter who you are or where you live. It doesn't matter how struggling you are or how rich you are. There's only one plan of redemption. It's wrapped up in what he calls the everlasting gospel. Every culture knows about sowing and reaping. 
every culture knows about food. We don't, we don't all have the same food stuff. I went to Massachusetts. For the first time I walked into an apple orchard. And they showed me different size buckets. So you pay for the size bucket and you pick your own apple. And I tell you, I'm accustomed to buying American apple. But that day, I walked in acres and I pick what I want. I pick the choice ones. I look carefully are the ones who have spots or signs of blemish a fimi money and a mipia for it and it struck me if God gave the best he had spared not his own son and Jesus the cross of all the writings of the Psalms. Why did he pick Psalm 22 verse 1? Of all the text he could have chosen to cry out. He picked Psalm 22. My God. My God. Why hast thou forsaken me? He who spared not his own son. But delivered him up for us all. And Paul says even while Christ was crying, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 19, 20, I think it is, for, to wit that God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world to himself. He's making sure affliction will not rise a second time. He's making sure there'll be no blemished fruit through the pearly gates. He's making sure that the efficacious nature of the blood of Jesus is enough to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, to remove all blemishes, to remove all stains, to remove all spots and wrinkles. You don't have a sin that the blood of Jesus can cleanse unless it is the pernicious sin against the Holy Ghost. And I want to talk with you. I begin with myself. Every chance I get, I said, God, the road behind me is longer than the journey ahead. I've come too far. The road ahead is shorter. Too many miles behind me. Too many sunsets. I've crossed the hot burning desert. I can't go back. I won't go back to the way I used to be. Because heaven is on my mind. And the journey ahead is shorter. So he said, look on the field. Look on the field. When men are marrying men, know that the harvest of the earth is ripe. Look on the field. When women are marrying women, even some of them are female bishops marrying their female bishop. Look on the field and know that the harvest is ripe. He said, thrust in the sickle. I'm done, but there's so much in the passage. You know the last part says, when the second man thrust in the sickle, John uses a language that his hearers were familiar with. He said, I saw the blood of men coming up to the horse's bridle. I saw the blood of the ungodly. I saw the blood of the unrighteous up to the horse's bridle. Will your blood be in there? He calls it the everlasting gospel because there's no other way. 
to save the world. Do you want to be saved? I will ask you a plain question. I don't know what you're going to sing, but let me ask you three questions and then I'll ask her to sing. Question number one. Is there anybody here who used to walk with Jesus but the devil deceived you? You've lost that loving feeling. You've lost your hold on Jesus. You've lost your former estate. But you and Jesus know you don't want to die that way. Is there anybody here you once walked with Jesus? You're in my first group. Do something about it today. My second group, my second question. Is there anybody here you are not a baptized member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? I don't preach on people. I have too much class for that. But I do believe with all my heart. I was once a Methodist. And you ask me why I am an Adventist? Because having read the Bible, there is no other denomination that's closer to what the Bible says. And that's why I am here. So I ask you, if you are not a baptized member of the remnant flock of God, I want you to do something about it. I'll come to my third group after she's through singing. I want you to think about it. I may interrupt her, but don't mind my interruption. Keep on singing. I've come too far to yes. look back. She picked the right again. song. There's a new. I've come too far to look back again. There is nothing behind me. All the pleasures I used to love sing the song, child. Sing the song. have all faded from view. There's a new day ahead of me. Yes, there is. All my heartache is over. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. For I left it On at Calvary. Calvary yes. Where my new life began. Too far, too far, too far. I've come too far to look back. With this man, with this man, church. Would My stand, feet have walked stand. through the valley. Yes. Sing the song, child. Sing the song. I've climbed mountains, crossed rivers. The harvest of the air. Desert places About to be reached. I've known. Too far to look back. Nearing the home stretch. But I'm nearing the home Is there anybody show. here? To walk with Jesus. There he there but the I want to pray with you if you're Heaven's honest in your heart. Angels you used to walk I with Jesus, but the devil dragged you back. Would you raise your hand if there's somebody in the back? I want to pray with you. Look back. If you're outside, it's time to come on in. It's time to come on in. I want to close the service with all of the harvest celebration people on the inside. If there's anybody here, you used to Some walk with Jesus. No reason you used to walk with Jesus. Leaving. And the devil dragged you back. God bless you. God bless you. Life why, don't give you, come? you why don't you come? Is there anybody here? You're not a baptized member of the Red Church. Would you come? And you want to make your call in an election show? God bless you. Turn you want to make your salvation a sure thing? Would you come? Again. God bless you, sir. Would you come? 
the harvest time is coming the new day we're sowing now and you reap what you sow it's time to break up your fallen ground your heart so no more of them fall sow to yourselves in righteousness reap in he mercy come on to Jesus Come on to Jesus, sing the song, sing the song. Come on to Jesus, come on to Jesus. I've come to far to the look back. Somebody else today, somebody else. You know yourself. My feet are you, you not mixing words today. Somebody else today. You know you need to come. I've you know you need to come. Cross there's somebody up in here. Is there anybody up in here? You know you need Desert a closer walk with Jesus. I've you know known. you need some recommitment. You know you need some more fire power. You know you need the Holy Ghost. There are times when you're slipping. There are times when you're sliding. But you know right now, you are too close. You are on the home stretch. And you say, God, the harvest is heaven. I don't want to lose my salvation. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? I'm talking to honest folk tonight. I'm talking to honest folk today. Somebody here, you're honest in your heart. You're saying, Jesus, oh Jesus, I've come too far. I have some struggle, Jesus. Everything is not Some right. See no reason but I'm coming for because I need to be renewed. I'm coming, God. It's my life. life will give it's you my life. God bless you. I know what I feel, Jesus. I know what's happening, Jesus. I know what's happening to my life. I don't want anything less than to be full hundred for God. I don't want anything less than to be fully committed, fully surrendered, completely dedicated, all sold out. I know the time is gone, but if that's you, why don't you come and see you come, young lady? Come on. Make some room. Come on. I don't care who's looking at you. It's your life. It's your salvation. It's your destiny. He's looking. He's looking for folk who are serious about living for Jesus. The only way to die for Jesus is to live for Jesus. Sing the song, child. Sing the song. My feet have walked through Somebody else. You say, God. While on I have this, mountains, you are calling. Do not pass me by. You're fixing up somebody else. Places Do not pass me by. This is my last call for this group. But this is my last call for this group. In this group, you want to be somebody who used to walk with Jesus, but the devil drag you out. In this group, maybe somebody Heaven's who's never been surrendered, never been I baptized. But there's somebody else who needs to be up here. I've come too far to look back. She's going to pause for a while. I did tell you, I'm going to leave my third group for the last. I don't beat around the bush. I don't sugarcoat. Listen to me carefully. I don't beat around the bush. I don't sugarcoat. If you go and go to heaven, make up your mind. Bless the Lord. I see green dress go down for black dress. And both green dress and black dress are smiling in Jesus. Bless your heart, green dress. Listen to me. There's not a single one of us in here without a struggle. But you know what bothers me? What bothers me are my careless church members who can't see that the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. They live in the same sin day after day and month after month. Like puss drink milk and lick the whiskers dry as if nothing happened. But today, I'm warning somebody. Heed the warning. You know you need to come. And let me say this. If you walk now, somebody going to talk. If you don't walk, somebody's still going to talk. If I were you, I'd walk 
and let them talk. Let them talk until their blood pressure passed the zinc and passed the cloud. Your prayer is going up to the mercy seat. So here's my final call. It's going to be rough. But here it is. You are not satisfied with the spiritual life you're living right now. You know there's another level that God wants to take you to. If that's you, then you know what you need to do right now. Sing the song, child. Look around, there's unhappiness. Some see no reason for leaving. Life will give you a broken dream. Full of heartache and fear. Turn around, don't look back again. Face a new day before you. Place your heartaches in Jesus' hand. He will mend broken dreams. Yes, do you know it? Will I've it? come too far to it while you look back. If you know the song, I you sing it. I need to walk through, walk through the, the valley. The valley. Places. I've climbed mountains, you've known, crossed rivers, you've been rivers, you've seen the places of the desert. I've known, but you're not to go back, but you're I'm determined the that the whole show is almost here. The is about to pass the sickle. He's about to put in the sickle. He's about Heaven's to the angels you can't are singing. I've come too far to look back. Could you sing it one more time? Could you sing it one more time? I've come too far to look back. Yes. My feet have walked through the veil. I've climbed mountains, crossed rivers, desert places I've known. But I'm nearing the home shore, the redeemed are rejoicing. Oh, yes. Heaven's angels are singing. Come too far. I've come, come too far come to too far. look back. But I'm nearing the home shore. The redeemed are rejoicing. Oh, yeah. Heaven's angels are singing. I've come too far to look back. Too far to look back. Oh God, our heavenly Father. Thank you for the everlasting gospel. Thank you for earth's final warning. Because sometimes, God, we wonder how much longer before you come. While the desert places that we've been in test our fortitude, we wonder how far from home 
As we bend our steps, the watchman asks. We wonder how much longer must we wait? How much farther must we travel? But the everlasting gospel tells it clearly. We're on the home stretch. We're on the home stretch. You've given us an encouraging word. That even if we die, death will not have the last word. For blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. And God, we know we have enough common sense to know that we cannot die in the Lord if we do not live in the Lord. And so here we are at this altar. We thank you, God, for those who have come in the first group conscious that they need to come back to you. God, they're not concerned about those who are looking on. Their only concern is with their soul and their God. Thank you that you've given them the courage to walk out. Thank you, God, for those who have come who have never surrendered in baptism before. We pray, Almighty God, that you would help them to know that your hand is not too short and your air is not too heavy, but you're able to save to the uttermost. And in this large group, we're not mincing words. God, sometimes we behave like a wretch. Sometimes, God, we ignore our best judgment. Sometimes we sin while we lock off our consciences. And there are times, Father, when we feel so wretched and we feel so miserable because we fail to give it all to Jesus. Today we are reminded just as how plantains are reaped and corn is reaped and banana is reaped and, and coconut is reaped because God, there's a season, a season, a season for every purpose under heaven. This is the season of repentance. This is a season of recommitment because the harvest of the earth is ripe. We look around us sin has reached alarming proportions and in the midst of a sinful society the love of many in the church have waxed cold on the outside God we see the signs all around us and on the inside we see spiritual lukewarmness let there be a revival as we wait for the harvest because we've come too far to look back. We're on the home stretch. We're down in the toenails of Daniel 2. We're down in the feet of iron and clay. God, you've given us the prophetic word. Help us to heed the word. Bless Pastor Watson and his family. Bless the elders and the officers of the circuit. Bless the members. God, you want reapers in the field. You want a church united for the mission. But God, we've got first of all to be wrapped tight in the Holy Ghost. Teach us how close we are to your coming. And then send us out as a united army. To warn an ungodly society. Forgive us of our backsliding ways. Heal us, O oh God, of our spiritual lethargy. And start a fire in our bosom. It's not my brother nor my sister. But it's me, O oh God, standing in the needle. Start a fire. Start a fire. Start a fire. Start a fire. Holy Ghost, start a fire. Somebody has been yearning and longing. Start a fire. Start a fire. Somebody, Jesus, some young man, some young lady, they're tired of hypocrisy, tired of wayward living, tired of sin, tired of straying. Start a fire. Start a fire. Start a fire. Start a fire. 
send us out as a united army. May your will be done and may your kingdom come. Hear us, O oh God, we pray. In Jesus' name, let God's children say, as you go back to your seat, I'm glad they can't blame me. I didn't see any clock anywhere. Didn't see any watch anywhere. And he's just showing me. And I don't know if it is working. Praise the Lord, it's not working. May God so help us. And we will know that there is still grace. There is still sufficient grace. The harvest of the earth is ripe. He's about to thrust in his sickle. There'll be only two groups. The wheat in the kingdom and the tears for the fire. Only two groups thrust in thy sickle. Some in the kingdom and the rest their blood will come up to the horses brighter. You and I have heard the warning. May God by his grace so empower us before it's too late. And I have this bad habit of running up and down. I run here and I run gone. I run come and I soon run gone. Don't look at me that way, Kedanya. I'm going to tell your father. I enjoy being with you. I don't get the chance to go to all of the congregations and so I have to tell you greetings on behalf of your brothers and sisters back at the conference office. Our secretary, and I want to correct something. Uh, Pastor Donovan Williams, our executive secretary, he asked that somebody else be assigned. And sometimes when people don't know the facts, they say what they want to say. But he's been an open soldier. And uh, he's one of our vice presidents. I bring you greetings from our secretary, Pastor Rose, our treasurer, Mrs. Popkins, the two vice presidents, Pastor Donovan Williams, Pastor Brevet, and all our directors. The Lord is soon to come. Remnant, are you hearing me? The Lord is soon to come. You know, I don't like dead people. That's why I bury them. I don't like dead people and I don't like dead church. The Lord is soon to come. Hungry or no hungry, the Lord going to come. Are you listening to me? May God help us to do our best to make our calling and election sure. And you can't be on your way to heaven and not be a faithful witness for God. So let me give you first an early news. Footprints 3 starts on January 31. And I want Beast and Spring alone, all by themselves, to baptize 100 people. Oh, no, here will me say. All that it takes is for revival to break out among God's people. One can chase a thousand, and two can put 10,000 to flight. The Lord wants to come. Do you want to go home? Sure. Do you want to go home? Yes. Now, now, she has a mic in her hand, but she's going to stand up on with a little longer. I know that she knows that she don't like me, but she can't stop me from liking her. Still, so it go. I may not see you again, so here's it. I, I know your pastor is after my own heart. He's a missionary-minded person. And by the way, so let me talk it out of, out of turn. I have gotten about 10 begging and pleading. Come over into Macedonia and help us. Ever since, you know, 42 million persons connected with Footprints during our five weeks earlier, January 15 to March, whatever that Sabbath was. 
and that's not my story. The, the, the trucker, the, the social media guru who was handling that part of it was in Trinidad, and he sent the report to the Inter-American Division, and they sent it to me. 42 million persons around the world connected with footprints. And even today, I got a text that there are some persons waiting overseas for me to baptize them. I can't go everywhere, but I thank God that he has given Isilda's boy grace. Barefoot Isilda's boy, grace to carry the everlasting gospel. I'm God's messenger boy, so I'm just, I've decided I may go to three places. And anywhere me I go, me I carry him with me. So if at one point you don't see your pastor, ask the president where pastor dead. Because anywhere you find the president, I see him place, you're going to find him. May God bless you. Let's do our best to spread the gospel. Whatever you do, if you're in Sabbath school, win souls for God. If you're a deacon, win souls for God. Whatever your office in church, you must be a witness for God. And if you don't have membership in church, I come in to baptize you. Or I'm going to send pastor to baptize you. God bless you. Enjoy being with you. Thank you, gentlemen, for the sound. May God be with you. And if we never, ever meet, we, we sometimes take these words lightly. But a few Sundays ago, Timothy Gunter called me early morning that his sister's husband just died. I said, Boyd Khan just dead, sir. I drove out to the house. And I hugged the children as I walked them through the grief of the sudden death of their father. It could happen to you. It could happen to me. Make your calling and election sure. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, all I can say is, what a word. What a word. I want to thank our president to avail himself and to allow the Holy Spirit to continue to use him and to use them so mightily today to present a word to us in a time like this. We'll now have Sister Kadanya Young to come and bless our hearts. The stars danced in anticipation The trembling crowd, they know it's time Musicians are tuning their instruments and the singers are humming here comes the bride triumphantly the
Stand. Amen and amen. The devil is working, but this, the, the, the word has been spoken already, so he can't stop it again. Amen. Yes. I'm now going to group to come at this time. The VIP group to come at this time, so we can bless your heart. Uh, it will be a catawampus time in heaven when we all gathered on that street of gold.
fainted until I found the Lord. Lord, I prayed and I prayed. Lord, I prayed all night long. Lord, I prayed and I unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance unto you and give you peace. Father, we have given you thanks, Lord, for feasting upon your spiritual food. O oh Lord, as we are about to partake of the physical food, I ask that you will bless it. You will breathe upon it like the five loaves and two fishes that everyone may be filled. Bless us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dismiss us, Lord. seated. We'll sing, sing the wondrous love of Jesus as we meet at the door. Oh, sorry, sorry. The authentic praise will take us out.
We read of a place that's called heaven. It's made for the pure and the free. So sweetly are singing Betrayals and failures destroy All pain and all suffering forgotten
And you realize life's not always fair You can run away and hide Let the old men decide Or you can change your circumstances with a prayer When everything falls apart Praise His name When you have a broken heart Just raise your hands and say Lord, you all I need You're everything to me and he'll take the pain away when it seems you all alone praise his name when you feel you can't go on just raise your hands and say great Can praise the word away. 